Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dean here, and I'm with the infamous Helen Pritchard. Well, she's not infamous. She's actually she's she she does an amazing thing on Facebook, teaching people LinkedIn. She's got all of that nailed. I need to kind of steal her insight into how to build these groups as well, because you're doing a course on that at the moment, aren't you? You're doing about how to build groups and things like that as well. <laughs> Five day challenges, yeah. So, Helen, thank you for doing this, for tolerating me unscriptedly interviewing you. Bye. Um, so, uh, how you specialize in LinkedIn? Yes. How did you get into it? Um, well, like all good stories, I was drunk and desperate, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I needed to make some money. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I got into LinkedIn because I was, when I was, when I was 10, 30, roughly about then, about 10 years ago, I um, re recently divorced or recently separated. I was in a lot of personal debt. I had two small children under five. Um, I was trying to build a social media business, if you like, doing social media for the people. Um, and I knew I needed to get some new clients, but I didn't have any money to spend on any advertising. I didn't have any confidence to go and talk to people and I didn't have the logistical ability to go to anything <laughs> beyond, you know, within certain hours. So things like networking about the question, things like, you know, paying for a mentor or, you know, paying a, like investing in Facebook ads and stuff just weren't options. So LinkedIn for me was just a really good, just seemed like a really good option for somebody who had no money and who wanted to connect with people who were potential clients. And that's really, that's really how I got into it. Okay. And you've been kind of, um, taking it by storm you're really showing a lot of people how to get their heads around the platform yeah but before we go into ripping the naughty people on linkedin did you ever do at the early days did you do that whole connect and pitch when you were you know before um, you do it now before your training did you do the connect and pitch thing I've, I've trialed it so when i first started no i didn't no i didn't do the connect and pitch because i didn't know how to use linkedin that's the thing so the, re the way i use linkedin is the way that i teach it is the way that i set it up when i first started which was to make it about my ideal client, to write for my ideal client, to connect with my ideal client and put out content for my ideal client. I never I never knew any of these tactics or anything. It didn't make any sense to me. It was only like when I've been doing it for a while and I've been getting leads and stuff, I thought, oh, everyone else is saying, you know, write a personalized connection request, you know, send them a, a message when you connect, you know, start a conversation, try sending funny, like humorous things. So John Buckham's a good mate of mine. So, you know, I tried his technique of writing a kind of longer pitch message and, and I'm trying to incorporate some humor into it so I did try all of these things and what I found was that it just didn't feel right and mm. work so I reverted back to what I knew worked which was sitting back and waiting for people to come to us rather or come to me rather than me actively like running around chasing after business so and it worked so well I've, I've never really had to chase after business which is supposed mm. to sound super arrogant but I just never have so I knew I needed to get 10 clients, pay me 250 quid a month. I knew I wanted to work with small business owners in Warrington. My headline said, helping small business owners in Warrington, you know, sell more online using social media, 250 pounds. Know, everything was so explicit and clear. Mm. I just connected them with small business owners in Warrington and then a part of content about being a small business owner in Warrington. So, but then when they come to look at my profile and it was just all for them, they just said, mm. oh, really good. How, you know, I can see what it is. I can see what I get. I can see how much it is. How do I, you know, have you got space for me? And, and that's really how I've built all my businesses since then. So quick fire questions. How many times are you pitched by LinkedIn trainers on LinkedIn? Uh, well, in the DMs, probably about four or five times a day. <laughs> like but they, they, they're not pitching me. They're just sending out automated shite. Yeah, they're just churning it out and uh, hoping for the best. What about automation? It's for everyone wants quick fix, don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the thing is what, the way I always look at it is, for me, LinkedIn is like a 12 to 18 month play. And if you think you can shortcut that, then good luck. But what that happens is well, with automation, I get it. I mean, I have a lot of running with, or I used to have a lot of run-ins with like the automation boys, as I call them. Um, the thing is, you're going to get caught out. So you're going to send the wrong thing to the wrong person. And also you send 100 messages, they open up a conversation. One person might respond, so therefore it works. One person responds, but 99 people think you're a dick. Like you're just not, you just, you just destroying your professional reputation every single time you send out those mass messages. You know, every time you get one person who's naive enough or stupid enough to think, oh, this person really cares about me and wants to do business with me. Like, are they even your ideal client? Like, mm -hmm. do you really want somebody like that in your world? All those other people who are like, and you know, ask anyone, ask anyone on LinkedIn, do you like getting DMs? No, do the egg. So all those people, think of all those people who don't like you, 
think bad things about you, will never work with you, think you, you know, it's just, why would you do that to yourself? So I'm, I'm going to spin this one round on you now. And I just, I honestly confess, there's no, no script here. <laughs> what about, you know, the rise of the, the grumpy people on LinkedIn? How do you handle that? The people who just write content on LinkedIn about how shit LinkedIn is. Yeah, but the the ones who don't know you and feel that they can have an opinion about what you do. Oh, those people, yeah. <laughs> oh, those people. Those people make me rich, so that's fine. Like, the, the more... I used to get in all these online debates all the time, but you know why? Because I was so blindsided that people would think that I was wrong. You know, so when I was saying, yeah, but it's been working for me for years. I've been doing this for years. It's worked for me. I'm not a LinkedIn trainer. I'm a business owner who's used LinkedIn to generate leads for my businesses. I've trained hundreds of people in this stuff. This is how it works. It just it's guaranteed to work. And people are like, no, you're wrong. You're this, you're that, the other, you know. And I, you know, and it was just drove me crazy. Cause I'd, I'd be like, but why, why won't you at least just I used to say, like, you can be right or you can be rich. Like, why don't you just do it my way? And then when it works, like you'll be rich and you won't care the fact that you had to admit I was right. <laughs> but they would just fight me to the death on it. And I, I used to defend my work to the death. I really did. Um but now I don't, you know, I don't have to now. So I don't anymore. Like, but yeah. when I used to get into those big arguments online, you know, I used to make more money because for every person that was like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're this, you're that, there'd be like tens and hundreds of people messaging me privately saying, oh my God, I've never thought about doing it that way. Can I, you know, can I join the next thing? You know, so it always did, it always worked out for me, but like Mike and I are really good mates and he say to me, look, Helen, it's taken a little bit out of you. Like it takes a little bit away from you. Every time you get into an argument with an idiot online who's never going to buy from you, it's just triggered by you by for whatever reason. I mean, he gets people messaging him, slagging me off. You know, I'm the most. <laughs> if, if you don't even talk about Mike Winnett as a, you know, <laughs> he parodies people on LinkedIn, and uh, I'm the most requested person he gets to parody. Wow. But he's my mate, so he knows yeah. I'm a bit. So he can't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> He knows that everything I say is true. So yeah, but he gets well, a lot of direct messaging him saying, "Oh, Helen's this, Helen's that, like Helen's this," and he's just like, "Helen's legit. Like you're wasting your time." Yeah, I mean, there's there's always people. You know, you will never please a hundred percent of the people. Oh, no, never, never would do. Never. I, I I can't please a hundred. You know, um, the, I got a, a funny review, uh, and the reviews sometimes really cut. I mean, we're all supposed to be impervious to it, but sometimes they cut. Yeah, of course. Uh, and we did we did an event, and um, anybody who knows me knows I'm a bit I'm a bit loud, but not not kind of full of myself, you know. Uh, so so I read my reviews, and I'm like, oh, this one guy guy said he was he was like Tony Robbins. I was like, were you in the same place? This is me. Apart from the fact that I'm probably as wide as he is tall, um, <laughs> it was like, uh, and I was like, what? Uh, and what he see, what he came down to was, he uh, he wanted to connect, use LinkedIn to develop his business, but he didn't understand that the company page wasn't going to do it. Oh, oh, bless him. Um, so I was like, no, it's all about you as a person. People buy from people, and I know you say that in your training as well that it is about the people the company pages are dog shit i say that a lot as well <laughs> they yeah. well they the only thing that they're good for is if you look at it and go does this look like a reputable business but you can fake all of that too yeah of course so covid19 has mm. kind of messed up a lot of people's way of selling particularly some of the kind of more reluctant digital adopters do you think linkedin now is more i'm asking you a question that you're going to say obviously yes to because it's a no-brainer but how how hard or how have you found it and what do you see the future of linkedin in the next two years um linkedin drives me crazy because it's got such a good opportunity there if they the thing is i think the whole the whole corona thing i think it's been in a, in a way been good for linkedin because everyone's at home you know as long as people aren't furloughed and they can post and stuff like I think people have had a bit more time um to sort of sit and maybe work on that I mean like we've had really good results from people who've been like in my training who've been actually been active on there saying is there any point and I'm like yeah definitely because you know the world will open up again and, and things will start turning and the people that have been consistent will will win but um the next couple of years I, I what I pray for is for LinkedIn to stop being so stubborn about this whole 
only connect with people that you know thing because I think it's destroying the opportunity for so many people you know restricting people because they're asking to connect with people they don't know doesn't make any sense anymore I don't mm. think especially if you pay it I get it if you're not pay I get that they want to monetize and I always say this people, do you know how many times I get asked should do I need LinkedIn premium like, like <laughs> I need a t-shirt on it. Yeah, you know, and my answer is always, you don't need it. You don't need it for it to work, but God, it greases the wheels. So get it. Mm. Going to use LinkedIn. It's such a great platform, great opportunity. Then it's 50 quid a month. It's nothing, you know. Of mm. course, I have premium. But I think if you pay premium, you should get the right to at least ask to connect with as many people as you want to and use it in the way that, that, that I teach, which is about, you know, creating an ecosystem around your potential clients and putting your content out there. And, and you know, you become the go-to person for that thing. Um, I think that they're, they're, they're almost cutting off their nose to spite the face, really, by clinging onto this. You know, and some of the stuff they say makes no sense. You know, person, you know, you must write a personalized connection request. Well, why? Why must we? Yeah, why because it's it's actually really hard to read them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they make you. They sort of insist you do it, or they suggest that you do it. But then the the the, the, the message they've created, like, "Hi, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn," is perfect. So why mm -hmm. can't that one? You know. Yeah. They, they didn't, I'm sure they didn't just make that up, you know, so that frustrates me a lot. Um, and I think they, they focus on a lot of the things that they're trying to be like cool, like Facebook, instead of just being really good at what they do, which is about connecting professional and business people together. You know, so things like groups, I think you just get rid of, like just kill it off, like just stop, stop investing in it, stop talking about it, stop going over. Kill off groups, kill off, well, business pages, fine. You know, they need to look at the ads, the ads uh, platform a bit more carefully. You know, just getting people out of that, you must like and know and trust these people rather than saying, look at this massive opportunity across the world, across the globe, you know, this database of people that we've got, you know, how can we get these people talking to each other? Hmm. And I think if they were if they were really smart, you know, you look at Sales Navigator, the top end subscription yeah. in, in, in and fact, you go, well, actually, what if they introduced one where you didn't have those connection limits? Yeah, imagine how much better it would be if I didn't have people getting restricted all the time or even being banned or shadow banned or, you know, it's, I get they're trying to stop spamming, but they should be focusing on getting rid of things like automation, getting rid of things like engagement pods, getting rid of things that are basically just, you know, like Gary V says, you know, market is ruining everything and they've ruined LinkedIn, but, you know, maybe not letting people direct message people first unless it's, uh, you know, an inquiry about wanting to work together. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they won't even give me LinkedIn Live because I talk about LinkedIn. So I don't know. They're, they're, I'm sure they're not interested in my thoughts. But I just think, you know, I've, I've turned, you know, 20 plus thousand people onto using their platform. And it's embarrassing when they show me up by, you know, restricting people or not allowing people to connect with people and stuff. But you would think, you would think that what they would do is a bit, a bit like Facebook. They'd go, well why don't we empower these people give them some kind of like badge and uh, and encourage them because effectively your students you can tell them actually premium and sales navigator are great great services and effectively you're selling it for them well absolutely yeah i mean i've got i got a network i mean you know you know i've got my 30,000 on linkedin i've got my 15,000 in my free group i've got my 1500 in my paid group i've got you know, 10,000 to 20,000 people a year going through my challenges. That's a lot of people that come to me wanting help with LinkedIn. And they're, they're all people I could potentially sell on premium. I could potentially get a kickback, you know, yeah. on LinkedIn. Let's do each other a favor. But I can't because I can't recommend premium because it's not going to allow them to do what I really want them to do, which is to be able to search and request unlimited amount of people, you know, who then make their own decision whether they want to accept this person or not. You know, it's not like I'm saying we should be able to spam people. I'm saying is we should be able to craft a headline that speaks directly to our ideal client and ask to connect with that ideal client and let them make a decision whether they want to connect with us or not. And that's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And none of my students would ever send a follow-up message or start pitching people in the DMs or start spamming people. So, well, I hope they wouldn't. Um, so, in a way, it's kind of that it's, it's just frustrating. It's just frustrates me a lot, actually. <laughs> More than I thought, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Therapy <laughs> session. Yeah. Um, Helen, you do the free challenges. Um, you run them on Facebook. Yes, much to the much to the distress of other people. Yes, particularly on my Facebook ads. Like, why are you running this on Facebook when LinkedIn's such a great platform? And it's like because LinkedIn's a terrible platform for community-based stuff. So we well, run the, yeah. the other thing, though, is one of the things that um, I think is good about the way you run your Facebook groups and everything is. Um, 
there's a lot of things there that people can ask for help. They can say, you know, I'm only a member of, I can remember sending you a message because I joined your group and I kind of confessed and said, I'm in the same sector, but I'm not going to do anything in a group. I'm just curious to see what people are asking so I can learn better what people struggle with. But you do a lot of stuff in that group to help people. Uh, the free challenge, I've not been on it, but the free challenge I hear, there's a lot of good stuff in there to help mm. people get on the way. And you have a mastermind as well, I think, is it? Do, yeah. Tell us yeah. about that. So the mastermind's like, it's my flagship thing. It's my baby, really. That just takes people from every step of the way of everything I've learned in terms of how to generate inbound leads from LinkedIn. But more than that, it's a community. You know, people get a year's worth of support in there as well. They get access to training forever. It's a 12-week program that people go through. And we let we have, like, cohorts, so they come in every, every 12 weeks. So, you know, we normally get 250 to 300 people in once a quarter. And it's just a really good good vibe and a good community. But it's it's about so much more than LinkedIn. You know, it's about getting people, getting really giving people, small business owners a real place to support each other and really get some clarity and focus themselves on on what how they're going to build their businesses. And we just have some great, it's just a good vibe in there. Really, really good. I love it. Yeah, I, you have some fun lives as well. I've seen in some of your groups. Lives, yeah. Well, and the face, um, the five day challenge is my favourite because that's a five day fast sprint, and we're in it every day. I've got like fifteen ambassadors who are in there helping people all the time. You get a task every morning. You know, it has to be done that day. We do a live with wine every evening. I do a Q and A, which sometimes can go on for hours. And when always something happens, it's always at my house. I've got two teenage girls. Always things happening. One of them got stung by a bee last time, and then a boyfriend fell down the stairs. And you know, there's always someone knocking on the door. So it's all like a bit chaotic, and it's not for everyone. But it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, and we help. You know, we average about between two and a half, three thousand people in each time, and ninety five percent of people don't buy. So I love that because all those people get help for free, which is great. Yeah, so, yeah it's yeah. good. It's a great business model. I like it a lot. It's it's a win win, as we say. Yeah. So, so what's your plans for world domination? <laughs> um, so the mastermind pretty much runs itself now. I'm dead lucky because I've really grafted the last couple of years um, with my organic, you know, showing up organically, doing hundreds and hundreds of guest experts and uh, podcast appearances and public speaking. And what that's meant is, and we've got hundreds of affiliates as well. So what that means is now I don't have to do that so much. And really mm. lockdown has been really interesting for me because Although we did three challenges back to back, which was chaos, but great because I just wanted to help like as many people as I could. Um, what it, what it, what I realised was I don't need to be posting all the time on LinkedIn now. I don't need to be posting. Although that's what I teach. Now three years in, I've got a team of about twenty five people. I've got you know we spend big on Facebook ads, so we spend about thirty to forty grand a quarter on Facebook ads, and that gets people into the challenge, and then we convert that into you know the average launch is about two hundred fifty k something like that. So now my business is like a grown up business, which mm -hmm. is. I'm not sure how I feel about that. So <laughs> I have got time to take a step back and think, what am I going to do next? So the mastermind will continue to run. Um, it has very little touch from me now, which is great, which is, always was the plan. You know, I keep thinking, God, I'm so lucky. And I'm like, well, I am really lucky, but it was also was the plan. <laughs> you know, it was, yeah. always, it was always the plan. Well, um, it, it's lucky that you work so hard. <laughs> yes. And it, it, was, it was always a strategic move to get to this point. It just feels weird. I feel like I've been retired a little bit now because I've got nothing to do. Um, so we've got a couple of things happening in terms of um, focusing on the things that I found out are really important in business. So when people come to me for LinkedIn help, the things that they need help with really aren't LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. As I say, you're asking the wrong questions, really. Right? You must get this. What's yep. the best post? You know, how long should my words be? Like, why should, should it post an article and all this kind of stuff? And it's like, actually, what you really need is some business clarity. So you need to know exactly who you are, what you're selling, selling one thing to one person at one time and being really clear who your ideal client is. And we teach that in the mastermind. We teach that in the five-day challenge. Um, but I realized I was teaching it to everybody. So I was doing, like, workshops with big, like, blue-chip companies and sit down and go, right, who's your ideal client avatar? And they wouldn't even know. And you'd have to start at the beginning again. So I've got a couple of new products. So those are going to be the three pillars of my new product. So business clarity, business mindset. So that's about how do you keep going when it's really hard? And it is hard. Like you say, it, it is upsetting when I get into those arguments online and people call me a liar or this, that, and the other. And, you know, it does upset me. But, you know, how do you build up your resilience within business mm -hmm. for that? Because you need that. Because, like I would say, no one's coming to save you. You've got to just, you know, pull your finger out and go on with it do yourself. Um, and third thing is business visibility, you know, that that showing up and being consistent and being visible and leveraging your time. So they're, they're going to form the, the main bit of my next product, um, which will be a, a new course. 
um, and we're, we're kind of releasing it section by section and eventually we'll pull it all together. Cool. So that'll be that. And then we've got some lifestyle things coming up, which I can't talk about yet. So oh. can't talk about them yet. Lockdowns screwed me over massively with that, but you'll see an announcement over that soon. So um, there's, there's no plans for a Lamborghini and a whiteboard? No plans for a Lamborghini and a whiteboard, <laughs> although Phil Harrison did buy an Aston Martin, thanks to our multiple launches that we did. Cool, that's his thing, absolutely. Um, I've just bought a mega shed in the garden. So that's, <laughs> that's been my investment of, the, of my sort of like, what should I buy myself? I know, a massive shed in the garden. Um, so that really, and then my book. So I'm in the middle of starting writing my book. So I'm just writing a book around the last three years um, of going from being pretty skin and things being pretty difficult to not being skin and things being pretty good. So that's kind of a, a story, an autobiographical, I get. I have to learn how to say that, aren't I? Um, <laughs> Sorry about me, but he's also got some of those business lessons in there. Um, and that's it, really. That's that's the, the next couple of years, I think. To look so, so given the journey you've been on and you're very open about, about where you've come from mm. um, and the struggles you've had, what's the one piece of advice you can give to, say, a business owner who's probably feeling a bit shitty yeah. given there's so much unknowns right now and some yeah. people don't even know if their business is even viable anymore what's the one piece of advice you can give them definitely sell one thing to one person at one time at one price i think that's a really underrated bit of business advice that people dismiss because like yeah but but actually if you can really focus on that and understand what you need to earn to get yourself out of the shit and what you want to earn to give yourself the lifestyle that you want once you know those numbers and you know you can just sell one thing that you like I have this model called value, joy, profit. So, you know, you're going to add lots of value. You're going to get loads of enjoyment about doing the work and the people you work with. And you can make good money, scalable money. Once you've found that and you get you get to decide, that's the one thing about business I think people forget. Like, you get to decide what your business is and what you do and what you sell and how much you sell it for. Like, you, you, you get to decide what you want to do all day. So once you decide that and get rid of everything, everything else in your life, everything else in your business... You know, everything that you could do, want to do, should do, might do, get paid to do, get asked to do. And just really focus on this core offering and be relentless on it until you hit those targets. Say no to everything else until you hit those targets and make it non-negotiable, showing up every day. So once you hit that foundational level, then you can take a breath and think, well, what do I want to do now? What do I want to do next? But honestly, that that's the one thing I'd say. And I meet a lot of business owners who are in uh, what I would call like overwhelm. You know, they're kind of, they're in like full on panic survival mode. And that's okay, that's good. Because sometimes that's the fire that people need to actually mm. make decisions. But making those decisions and having that clarity is like the biggest gift you give, give yourself in business. And and just giving yourself a break and thinking, well, actually, if this is probably the best things that ever happened to me, I've run two unsuccessful businesses before. You know, it's not like I just woke up and I thought, oh, look, I'm dead good at this business. It's just this one particularly has gone well. Um, but you get to decide and it's possible for everybody, everybody. You can have a business that's fun and enjoyable and profitable and that you love doing and you love getting up in the morning and going to work. But sometimes it might take two or three goes or more and that's okay. But, you you know, most business owners have got that thing in them that never say die. Going back to basics and just picking one thing that you're going to get really famous for and really go for it and be completely relentless, then I think that's the one thing I'd, I'd, I'd advise most people who are feeling overwhelmed in the current climate particularly so i haven't prepped you for this question but i'm gonna tell you why i'm asking you this question we actually grew up kind of not very many miles we never met i don't think but not many miles away and somebody you know is somebody i'm used to be kind of sort of related to and so we're kind of all from the same kind of area yes not a majorly affluent area i well i wasn't you were in the posh end of town <laughs> and i was in the poor end of town but like um Money, mm. right? I had a terrible understanding of money, not in the sense of budgeting, but in the understanding of how the rest of the world saw money. And I'll make it a simple example. I would price based on what I thought I was worth, mm -hmm. not on the value of the product. I don't know whether you, I, I'm literally asking you something that I didn't put, tell you about, but 
Did you have this problem at some point earlier where you couldn't you couldn't reconcile the value you delivered to the value you thought you were worth? And how did you overcome that? 100 percent. that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I money is like a really, really hot and interesting topic that I love talking about, actually, because having had absolutely no money, minus money and being in debt for a long time and now having like more money than I've ever seen. Like it's been a really interesting self-awareness journey on that. Um, and for me. Yeah, it's, I just think about that time. So I got asked to do a quote for somebody that I knew. And again, we're in Warrington, right? Whichever side of the river you live on, it's a small working class yeah, yeah. industrial town. You know, the, the glamour is not high. The glamour is not high, you know, uh, on the ground in Warrington. And um, I, I remember a big flashy agency in Liverpool who I actually have friends with them now, but, you know, was a friend of a friend of a friend, you know, and they asked and, and they asked if I could help them. Um, it was with a, a conference in 2014, I think, so six years ago, and uh, bringing Gary V to Liverpool, and I was like, of course I would, you yeah. <laughs> for free. Um, but I remember, um, I was so nervous, you know, speaking to them and just feeling that feeling of un like not unworthiness, really, you know, real, real crisis of confidence that would I be able to do it? Of course I would, you know, but you know, using Twitter. And then they asked me for my price, and I remember putting my my price in, and I priced over fifty pound an hour, and I felt sick. I felt physically sick. This is what I say to my my students now: like I get it. Like this, you know, I, get, I understand the physical way it makes you feel. I felt physically sick, and I sent it off. And because my mate was on the board, or my mate's mate was on the board, he was there when it came through, like the the the, the email, and they were all there, and they said, "Oh, she's put a price in, and it's fifty quid an hour, so she's going to be shit." But since she's your mate's daughter or whatever, like, we'll give her a go and see what happens. You know, and that was such a big lesson to me. I was like, well, for me, it felt completely out of my league price-wise. I wasn't worth it. To them, they were like, God, this is going to be a disaster, but we'll give her a go, you know. And it's kind of, and I thought if, I did, if they'd have said no, I would have thought they'd said no because I was too expensive. But actually, they were saying no because I was too cheap. Yeah. Because to them, to get all the bums on seats to a Gary V event, which we did, we sold it out, you know, all paying 100 and quid ahead. You know, they, they're, they're making so much more money than they were spending on me anyway. So, but then it, on the other end of that, I put in, um, so I don't do one-to-one -one anymore. And when I decided I didn't want to do one-to-one -one anymore, you know, I was looking at my pricing and I, I put it on LinkedIn, actually. And uh, I put my, my new rate is £500 for a, for a session, for a call, which is an hour. Well, should have seen everyone lose their shit in the comments. <laughs> like, it's like the, all these pilots, weirdly, were like, oh, my God, there's nurses eating at food banks and you're charging 500 quid for a telephone call and, like, well, this is a joke and you're a joke and you're this. But you know what? Then, see, that then that version of me was like, I don't give a shit, like, what you think. I know that if someone gives me 500 pounds, they're going to go and make five grand at least, you know, mm -hmm. if they do as, as, as I tell them to do. Like, so totally different. So it's 10 times the amount of, of per hour if you like but my mindset and my confidence and my belief around it and even the way that I reacted to all the abuse you know I was kind of like you're a pilot mate you get you get paid to fly from A to fucking B like what what's it got to do with you what I'm my family <laughs> you know yeah it's kind of so so different and within a yeah six year gap like for somebody's mindset money mindset to change so much and it just shows you like anything's possible you know the same me I was just speaking to the ghostwriter who's writing my book with me you know I was talking about when I was in the shop so I was in the shop with my dad I was completely in debt I'd not opened my post for years and all that kind of stuff um and I, my dad took me shopping and then the next day I, I was in the shop again and I, I thought I'd added it all up I was in the co-op in Grappenall she like works there it's just and uh, I thought I'd had it all right and I hadn't anyway so I didn't have enough money to pay for what was there and it's literally a case of going right well what's most important and she was kind of like, you know, taking things off the till as we were going. You know, there's a queue of people. I live in a small village. You know, it's pretty fucking humiliating. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not it's not a good point to be at. However, it's that point where I just thought, you know what? No one's coming to save me. Like, I have got to get myself out of this. And I made, and I put such a lot of effort into understanding my worth and understanding that it's not intrinsically linked and all that kind of stuff. And, and and getting all the gathering all the evidence together from the work that I was doing and, and the impact I was having on people, you know. And now I've got no qualms in saying, you know, charge five hour. Like I don't even do one to one anymore. I've got no qualms in saying I did a million pound in sales orders. I have to say that, remember, because everyone goes loses their shit in the comments. Because they're like, Do you not understand the difference between turnover and 
in profit. And I'm like, oh, no, that's because I'm not an actual business person. Of course, I understand the difference. I'm not sales orders, you know. Have you had a million in sales orders? Yes or no, you know. And then it's no. like, God, you're so, such an, you know, you're so arrogant. I'm like, no, you're having a go at me. You've looked at my company's house for last year's accounts. Like, you're a crazy, do, insane person. Do, do you know what, though? That um, I remember seeing this kick off. And mm -hmm. I, I, I was a coward and stayed out of it. But, <laughs> right. but, but if, if, if you didn't say, you, you know, the nature of what you do, you're helping people generate revenue. So they want to know that you, you've done it yourself. So right. you, te you telling people, look, I've done it. It's yeah. not like you're going, you know, I made the joke about the Lamborghini or that I know Mike Winnett has great fun with the Lamborghini crowd. He does. But but telling people genuinely, I've made this work. Yeah. You know, I can show you how to make this work. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It's when you get the people who haven't made it work who rent the jet and rent the Lamborghini. Of course, yeah, of course. And I, I get that. I can see where people get triggered. So when I did the million pound in sales orders, because it wasn't even in sales, because 90% of the people pay over 12 months. Yeah. So I've done a million in turnover, and my accounts will, will reflect that. I think it's like mm -hmm. 500 or something. Because people only pay that first deposit. But, yeah. you know, I'm open and honest about that. I'm not lying about that. But when we did four launches that were all over a quarter of a million, and as a team, we were like, fucking hell, in a year... We've done over a million in sales orders. Like we were happy about that. Yeah, like, we're celebrating that. And then for me to take that online and for people to really start ripping into me, I was like, this says so much about other people's money mindset. Like, because loads of people, like like you said, like people don't want to get involved in that shit. Of course they don't. Ninety percent of people, when you see when you see you go down like that in the comments, it's just pure panto. Yeah, everyone's watching. Nobody wants to get involved. But they're all DMing me, going, "Oh my god, that's so inspirational. I can't believe that you've done that. You know, so proud. You know." You must be so proud. So it's not that I, I can't bear it. It's just it blows my mind that, well, I don't like being called a liar. That's one thing I really do yeah. not like at all. So, but then you've got a guy who he looked at my accounts, fair, fine, and then he, I think I made a loss two years ago, and maybe even a small loss year before. So it's kind of like it looks like bullshit. So I kind of get that in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but he 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 uh, street viewed my house, been on Zoopla, and he was like, "Your house isn't what a millionaire would live in." I was going. And I, di I direct messaged him and I was like, are you all right? Like, you know, and he's like, I'm just sick of people ripping people off. And I was like, well, I get it. Like, have you been ripped off by someone? And he's like, yeah, I've spent all this money on this thing, you know, and it's kind of like, oh, I get it now. So, yeah. you, you know, hurt people, hurt people or whatever. Like, you've been ripped off. So you're now, you're triggered by anyone who looks like they're, they're seen to be not being transparent or not, or, or making claims, I guess. I get yeah. all and it is a big claim. It's a big yeah. claim. I would not have made it if it hadn't been true. Mm -hmm. And I had to be a complete liar if I didn't say it don't upset me. Because it absolutely, absolutely does upset me. But at the same time, you've got to take it with a little bit. Like It's a bit like TripAdvisor reviews. The people that are motivated enough to actually have a go at you on LinkedIn, there's usually something else going on. They're either, you know, they're not the nicest person or they're like, you know, but... It is, it is what it is. But the people who know me and the people in my world and the people that follow me and the people that actually do the, are my students 100% know that it's all absolutely true. But more importantly, it's about the impact. So mm. so, if I, so we just did, I think it's like 450K over two launches it was this time. Um, one was in lockdown. So we're, like, we're in the papers, like record launch in lockdown, which obviously everyone's pissed off then. Warrington Guardian, everyone's like, oh, looking out, like showing off. Oh. But so let's say I made half a million in revenue but sales orders not even revenue. and every one of those people everyone who gives me the 1500 quid i my my mission is to make sure they make more than that back at least mm -hmm. yeah so we have these things where we have like i've not made my money back calls you know people have made the 1500 quid back then we'll have a look and see what we can do and if, if there's something we can spot you know anyone who knows my work knows how passionate i feel about that because i used to be skin mm -hmm. and 50 a lot of money yeah same reason why you'll never hear me try and make a, a like a price overcome a price objection because when I was skinned and I said, I haven't got 1,500 quid, I meant I haven't got 1,500 quid. I didn't mean try and sell me something or try and make me feel bad or like I don't value it, you know. <laughs> I get really triggered by that myself. So that's why I always put prices out there. So so say I get half a million quid, all those people then are going to amplify that into more, more than they've given me. So mm -hmm. that five, half a million turns into five million, 10 million. Like that's the impact mm -hmm. that, that my work has. 
So it's almost like it's a good thing. The more money I make, the more money that's made in the world and that yeah. energy keeps flowing. And I say to people, if you don't do the work and you don't make the money back, you're like, you're fucking the whole system up. Like you're going to mess with the chi. You know, that's not what this is designed to do. You're supposed to be going out there making more money, miles more money than you've ever given me. And therefore we amplify it. And that amplifies not only just the money, but the impact and, you know, all the people that work with me are do, you know, doing good work. So, you know, I think... I don't know. I don't know, Dean. Maybe I'm a bit misunderstood. Maybe I just show up like an arty cow on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> and people, when they meet me, they're like, oh, you have got a well, after all. I think, though, um, it depends where people come from because yeah. when I when I hear you, I hear, like, my family communicate via insults. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's it's kind of like a very different, straightforward. And, and I can get how somebody say, not from the Northwest could go what she's a bit northern a bit direct i get that yeah a lot. Um, yeah but you know we, you what, what my mum would say was be you take it you take me as you find me yes um that's and that's it. it but you know helen um i have picked your brains even though you said don't say can i pick your brains <laughs> um that's a private joke i messaged helen and said at some point we should compare notes and she said, as long as you don't try and pick my brains. And I've just picked your brains recorded on camera. <laughs> uh, you know how many quick questions I get? Oof, there's not, yeah. very, not very quick when you've got 500 of them. There's a quote. There's a quote. If you help somebody for free, they'll mm. come back and ask for more help for free. <laughs> I like it. Thanks. Helen, thank you so much for That's doing this. Pleasure. Um, where is the best place? Where do you, you people go? I want to find out about this. This mm. northern woman whose tech says things as it is. Where where do you want people to come find you? Well, you can find me pretty much anywhere and everywhere, but I'm up to my limit on a lot of things. So like LinkedIn, I'm maxed out at 30K. Uh, Facebook, I'm maxed out at five. So you can follow me on LinkedIn. You can follow me on Facebook. If you just search for Helen Pritchard Warrington, you'll find me. Um, follow me on Instagram at Helen Pritchard online. Um, but the main place to go and hang out, if you like, would be my free Facebook group. We had to change the name and put my face on it because we had so many other LinkedIn people coming in and uh, saying, do this way, do this way, do that way. And it'd be like, you can be in here, but you can't start trying to teach the opposite way because it's just confused all these people. So yeah. um, it's kind of like my house, my rules. But yeah, if you come in there or if you sign up for anything of mine, don't worry, you'll know about the next five day challenge or the next <laughs> launch or the next time I'm selling anything. We'll, <laughs> we'll give you an opportunity to buy, don't worry.